Hello and welcome to Sculpting King of the Rusted Crown, Part 1. If you're interested in supporting me, check out the link in the description for my Patreon page. And you can support me with a little bit of money and there's a lot of different rewards and returns on your investment for you as well. So there's a link in the description, check that out. So in this series we'll be sculpting a 3 quarter life-size seated figure without the legs. And if you look at the two videos that came out before this, you'll see that we made an armature. We also made a maquette. Now the maquette is more of a was more of a design thing. So I'm not going to use the maquette to make any decisions here. Uh, all the decisions are from the model. Of course, I can't show you the model because he's naked, and I don't think he would appreciate it. I probably don't pay him enough for him to be on video. And I also don't know if YouTube likes naked people on video. Anyway, let's start talking about sculpture instead. So this video is uh, of two days of sculpting, I think a total of six hours, or well, probably a little bit less because there's breaks and stuff uh, for the model, but around six hours anyway. And it's sped up four times, 400%. And, and this is probably the format I'm gonna stick with for a little bit. Try to do, make two days into one video. And I think this speed, you know, you can kind of see what I'm doing, but it, it doesn't get too boring. And I'm going to try to keep this length of video as well. 20 minutes seem to be, seems to be pretty decent length. I think you guys, if you're interested in sculpture at least, will be able to watch this for 20 minutes. Or maybe you'll fall asleep, which will be fine as well. So what will we be doing in for the first two days? Well, we start off with a couple of uh, some measurements. And the measurements that I take in the beginning is the width of the pelvis and that's going to be my box and that's kind of the original decision i make a series of decisions and every decision that i make build builds on the last decision and the first decision that's the easiest decision is the width of the pelvis or the width of the box now it's important to remember that the width of the pelvis is not the total width of the sculpture and you can see me measuring it right here it's not the total width of of the hip section or the hip area uh, the width there is you know flesh and muscles on the outside of the pelvis but from the front you can very very easily see what is called the aces one on each side and it's kind of like this it's the end of the pelvic ridge i think kind of a point or a dot almost if uh, if a person is standing you can google the aces if you'd like and i think if you google the aces you will we'll be able to find uh, a lot of pictures and anatomy pictures describing what that is and it's a very visual clear thing so i start off with that then because on this figure he's seated on a base so it's kind of a cheat but because he's sitting on something that's flat i can also measure to the pit of the neck so i can measure that height and the pit of the neck is kind of in between uh, both of your clavicles there's this little dimple usually in between your clavicles we call that the pit of the neck and i can measure the c7 which is one of your vertebra and it's usually when you're standing or sitting it's usually the one that's pretty much the most apparent and if you follow the line of your neck muscles towards your neck and if you do draw like a triangle out of those out of the two of them the point that they meet is usually around the c7 it's important to note that you know the only measurement that i trust at this point is aces to aces the width of my box the c7 and the pit of the neck they're more just measurements that i take to kind of get me somewhere you know to to have a place to start and i am not committed to those at all so i when i start off doing this the important thing is to cover the armature first and foremost or the parts of the armature that are not flexible so i started off doing that i covered the armature then i measured the width of my box and i drew my center line and i positioned the box so that the center line you know the, the width of the pelvis we call that the box make like a little square out of it and we positioned the center line of course center line it needs to be in the center if it's in the center of the box it'll end up being in the center of the body as well and i draw two separate ones one for the box or the pelvis section hip area and then one for the rib cage section and you know the rib cage does move a little bit but it's not going to move a lot you know you're not gonna be able to bend your rib cage a lot i don't think enough to make a huge visual Im visual impact anyway so i draw the center line from the pit of the neck straight through this down through the rib cage and i do this on the front and the back and i connect the two by standing up on a chair and you'll see me do this a lot or a little bit at least i'll stand on a chair and i'll look down on my sculpture and i can see both center lines at the same time i will also put a tool 
so that it sticks up, that it's lining up with my center line and sticking up further, in, for example, in the front, sticking up higher than the sculpture, and then I'll look at, at the sculpture from the back and draw the center line so that it matches. And it's important that these two match. Now, they don't have to match. They need to match at the origin. So, or not origin, but uh, top and bottom where they would meet. So that's, you know, pit of the neck to C7, they need to match. And at the bottom where, where the box is, they need to match. But whatever happens in the middle, it's not the most important that they match, right? Nobody can ever see the front and the back of your sculpture anyway. And if they match at the top and they match at the bottom, uh, more likely they're going to match anyway, down through the middle of your sculpture. The center line is one of those things, and you can see me redrawing it right here, because it was probably wrong and I, I'm, I'm adjusting it. The center line is one of those things that you're going to see me redraw again and again and again. And I do it so much that I've actually cut it out uh, quite a bit of it. I cut out, every, cut out every time I walk back and I step back a lot. That's why there's so many cuts. You want to sculpt from a distance. You don't want to make decisions up close. You want to make decisions from afar. Uh, those decisions are going to be more accurate and you're not going to be impacted by perspective distortion and things like this. So I always step back as much as possible when I sculpt. And I redraw my center line all the time because it goes, it gets out of whack constantly. Because I put clay, as you can see, right, right, I love just 10, 15 seconds ago, I was building out my contour, and my contour, in the beginning at least, will run along my center line. I usually start out that way, and you'll see me depart from that pretty soon as well. But because of that, the center line gets out of whack, and I put clay on top of it. And so I need to constantly redraw it. Uh, so that I see it. You can see me redrawing it here again. And I usually use this little wooden knife looking tool, but I also got a hold of a very, very special tool that you'll see me use quite a bit, the, uh, the butter knife. And I've kind of grown to like the butter knife. It's, uh, it's a good tool. It's pretty straight, which is nice. And it's not too thin, so my center line, I could see it from across the room. Now my studio is not that big, but across the room is still um, a little bit away, and my eyesight's not the best. It's also important to, well, when I mentioned the box, the width of the pelvis, turning that into a box, that's more of a, a concept, right? It's something that I do to kind of, to help myself, essentially. Make things a little simpler. Sculpting a box is a lot easier than sculpting a pelvis. Uh, that's going to get covered with clay anyway, because we're not sculpting a skeleton. So the box is more representational than anything, but it keeps me on track. In addition to the box, there's also the egg, and I'm sure you can imagine what that is. That is the rib cage. And frankly, I am more and more, uh, I'm drifting a little bit away from putting too much work into the egg. <laughs> so what that means is that I don't necessarily sculpt an egg, right? You can see what's up there is kind of egg shape, but it's not really an egg. What I more end up doing is covering my armature, drawing the center line, uh, so that it will, so that I won't end up with armature sticking out, and I can adjust the the center line accordingly to make sure that my armature will stay inside my sculpture. Then I place my box, and then I start building contours from the front and from the back. Uh, and then I use the contours from the front and the back when I get to the side view. Now from the side view, uh, you can see me building contours as well, and I kind of have to do that a little bit in the beginning. But pretty soon I will start using the side, I will use the front and the back view once I kind of have some contours up there that are slowly starting to approach the width that I need. I will start turning those contours into form, and I'll start off by drawing, and you can see me doing that right now actually. I just drew on my clay, and then I reinforce my drawing uh, with clay. So I'm not just, you know... I see a lot of people who draw a lot on their sculpture, and it's great, but if you don't put any clay on there, you're never going to progress. So there's a way to put clay on there while keeping the drawing clean, and that is to put clay on the shape but leave the areas in between open. And that's why you can see big, big gaps and lines in between my forms. And again, these things, you will see a lot more of these things pretty soon. So essentially, I take my contours and I do my best to turn them uh, into forms. But I can't start sculpting the forms and the shapes before, before I have any contours. Now if I started doing that, 
the space that these shapes need to fit into is not really there. Uh, so I need to have the space that the shapes will fit on and into, or I, at least approaching that space. I try to stay away from my overall width for quite a while. Because um, if I reach my overall width, then I start got to start carving back and it becomes a mess. I try to avoid carving back as much as possible. I want to I wanna add... Uh, I want to just add. I don't want to take away a lot of clay. Now ideally, of course, you would never need to take away. You just build everything up, you know, from 0 to 100. Like a progress bar on a computer. But it doesn't work that way. And it ends up being a lot of back and forth. Which, again, is totally fine. So here you can see me kind of starting to draw out these forms. And I have some clay on there already. And they're starting to represent like general forms. And I always start around, again as I said, everything, every decision builds on the last decision. And what decision am I most comfortable with? I'm always going to be the most comfortable with the width of my pelvis. Uh, aces to aces, my box. Because I measured it, I set it up right in the beginning and I haven't lost track of how wide it is. And I'm never going to lose track of how wide my box is. I'm always going to have that drawn on there until the bitter end. And then I'll probably end up losing it because, you know, unless uh, you want to have lines drawn on your sculptures. Okay, of course, which people do, but I don't like that. So I'm not going to do it. So while I don't look, while it doesn't look like I step back a lot. Oh, there I did, but it's cut out. So. I, I draw out the shapes on the body and now I have a space, right? I have a width to put my shapes on, right? And that's important. And then I put clay on there. Uh, and I guess maybe I lost track of what I was saying about the box in my original decision. So I'll get back to that now that I remember. Every time I do anything new on the sculpture, you know, every time I start building contours, the first thing I do, I start around my original decision, the box. And every time I turn contours into forms, I will start around my original decision, the box. Every time I will start modeling out forms, I will start around the box. And the reason for this is that it's the closest to my original decision, so uh, the chance that something's going to be wrong there is the smallest. The further we get away, from my original decision, everything is based on another decision, right? Further away, so, you know, all the way to the top. Plenty of decisions have gone into getting to the top of my sculpture. Plenty of opportunity for mistakes. And uh, yes, this is not going to be one of those videos where everything goes perfectly. It's going to be plenty of mistakes. But that's, that's okay, you know. It's hard to avoid. And I'm not going to try and pretend like I don't make a bunch of mistakes and I have to change things all the time. So they're not really mistakes, I think. You know, that's what you can tell you. That's what I tell myself anyway. They're not mistakes until you've done something that you're locked into and so the, you have to compromise on your sculpture. And the way you can see me putting clay on here with these kind of big gaps in between the forms, I'm going to probably build almost the entire sculpture in this fashion. And this is very, very apparent on the back, at least. You can see it a little bit here as well, you know, there's some creases, of course, because he's leaning over, but especially on this view, you can see it very clearly. When everything is blocked in in this fashion, while I can get it fairly close, like as far as the, 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 the shapes go, I can get them fairly accurate. I can at least get them in the right place and then I can fine-tune the shapes a little bit later once I get some clay in between and things like this. But they can move around very easily, which means that I can change things very, very easily at this point. And that's the great benefit of sculpting in this fashion, I think. I can block out this entire figure and everything will be able to move. Now, there are some, what are they called, pitfalls, ca caveats, I guess. That would, for example, be, uh, you know, if I put on the shoulders, I'm kind of locked into a width. So I don't want to put on the shoulders until I'm pretty close to my overall width. 
the shoulder girdle, which uh, compromises of clavicle and, and scapula. Kind of makes this from above, it kind of makes this diamond shape. You know, the card, um, what is it called? The suit? Is that what they call it? The card suit diamond. It kind of makes a shape like that. And when I put that in, I it becomes very difficult to go back. Well, it becomes more difficult anyway. So I usually don't put that. Well, I can put the. I usually put the clavicles in, and I find the width of width of the clavicles. You know, there's like this little bump on the top of the shoulders. I don't think that will happen in this video though. That might be in in part two, but. Putting shoulders on is not something that I want to do until I feel very comfortable uh, with everything else going on. Because, and especially not a head, if I put a head on there and the torso is too short, that's that's a whole mess. And of course it's fixable, but it's not very ideal. Let's put it that way. Also having a shoulder on, or shoulders on there, shoulders and arms on there, and having the whole torso be too short is another thing that's just a whole mess you know then you gotta raise the shoulders and and re-sculpt your arm and move your armature and it's it's a pain in the neck now in a lot of these sculptures especially here at the, at the, at the Florence Academy we don't measure a lot actually but once you get into three-quarter scale and life size I do end up measuring and actually on on this video I haven't I hadn't gotten to the store yet but you'll see me use like a quite a pretty neat trick and that'll be I'll show I'll wait with showing that off that's a tease right there we'll show that off in, in part two because I hadn't gone to the store and gotten hold of uh, some very special material that I used to measure with so in this one I just used calipers but that gets annoying uh, having to walk up to the model all the time and measure and also because it's a three-quarter figure then you got to do math and stuff and so right here you again about the shapes you see me putting in shapes and I'm trying to kind of block in the space and figuring out how much space I need also I can I can break down a simplified overall shape and get it pretty accurate but then I have to put smaller elements into that larger space to make sure that everything fits in there and works as neatly as it should so for example from the bottom of the rib cage where i'm working right now to uh, the pectoral the side of the pectoral muscle chest muscle that length i could say okay that length is pretty good but unless i can fit all my shapes in there uh, i don't really know right so that's something that i do a lot too i start off with a bigger space uh, that I and I use comparative measurements and some normal and some caliper measurements to get that more or less, and then I break that space down and try to to figure out if, if all my shapes and all my forms will fit into it, and that the proportions of those forms will be correctly as well as I as I fit them into the space that I have. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, part one of sculpting the king of the rusted crown. And if you're watching this and you made it all the way to the end, there will be a link in the description that you can follow if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon. So check that out. There are, it's not only you giving me stuff, but there is some payback for you as well. Some rewards and returns on your investments, let's say it that way. Payback sounds a little ominous. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please, if you enjoyed the video, click like. If you didn't like it, Click the thumbs down, that's the not like. And if you have any tips or suggestions or feedback, leave them in the comments section. I read all the comments that I get, not that I get too many, but I read all of them, I answer all of them, and uh, feedback is always appreciated. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.